Hey everybody, with all the fire bans that they have pretty much yearly throughout any of the camping season, uh, propane fire pits are kind of the norm. So I'm gonna do show you how I built my fire pit using a ammo can. So I'm gonna try a new format with you guys. Um, I'm gonna call them three minute builds. They might be more than three minutes, they might be quicker than three minutes, but all these little builds that I wanna share with you guys, just how I did them to save a few bucks when you're trying to do it, um, that's gonna be the spot for them. So this will be the first one of, I don't know how many. Um, if you guys do like this format, it's just gonna be straight to the point, how to build it. Parts list and all the tools are down below. Let me know in the comments below if you like this format for these little builds or if you don't. And I can always do more in-depth videos if you need. If you guys have any questions, comment below and ask the question down there and I will try to read them all and answer what I can. All right, let's get to it. All right, so just getting into it, this is kind of what it takes. I put all the parts, all the tools that I use down below along with links and prices of what I paid at the time of filming this. So getting right into it, we're gonna take the box. We're gonna remove the lid right off of it. So it just comes up and it just pops off there. So we're gonna put that to the side and we're gonna to need to drill a few holes in it. So on the back side, this is where my propane's gonna come in. I'm gonna find wherever the center line is, five and a half inches, two and three quarter. We're gonna go two and three quarters up. So center line two and three quarters up. We're gonna drill a seven eighths hole. So we're gonna go just to the side of it and drill another hole. And that will be for the lighter to go into light your fire. Test fit. So across the top here, just make sure you have the box the right way so you don't drill at the bottom. Uh, we're gonna drill a couple holes to let some heat out the side. Drill them as big as you want. I am using a two and an eighth, because that's what I have. So I'll do three across both sides at the top. So you want to find the center, 11 inches, so that's five and a half, three inches, three inches. Repeat the same thing for the other side. So once you get your two holes on the back side and your holes up on the sides here, you're gonna take your expanded steel or this is just a stainless uh, mesh. So you're gonna take this and try not to cut yourself. And you're gonna lay it on top of your holes here. So this is gonna go on the underside here and you're gonna pop rivet them in place. Uh, doing it on the outside so you can mark your holes that way you can line it up. If you don't have pop rivets, you can just use small nuts and bolts. Uh, that works too. Mark the squares. Lined up with the square. Try to keep them aligned. Same thing on both sides. I have eighth inch rivets, so I'm gonna do a eighth inch drill bit. Drill all those out. So you're gonna go through and drill all the holes. That way you can pop rivet the grade in place. So that way you don't have lava rocks or anything like that falling through. Once you get that done, you're gonna take a rasp or file or something like that. Just clean up your holes. So once you get those in cleaned up, uh, so you're not gonna cut yourself, uh, if you wanna go ahead and paint it, I am using just a Rust-Oleum high heat paint. I'm just gonna rattle can this. Give it a day to dry. Uh, while I do that, I'm gonna assemble all the pipe work that goes inside of it. So you're gonna take your pipes, uh, three T's, four end caps, two of these little close connections, five four inch sleeves, and a three eighths to half inch adapter. I'll be using this yellow formula thread seal. It says it's good to 400 degrees. Whether I need this or not, I don't know. I'm gonna use it though, but it's gonna be in a configuration like an H. So this will basically be an H pattern, uh, the way you're gonna screw this together. I'm gonna to apply the thread seal and I will show you what it looks like when I put it all together.
So you want to make sure when you're screwing this together that these two bits right here are close enough together that this fits in the ammo can. So I actually had to put this in my vise to get a couple extra turns just to get it a little tighter than I could by hand. So I put the half inch to three eighths reducer on here, a four inch sleeve to a T, to the two close fittings to another T, to four more four inch with end caps on it. What we're going to do is actually grind kind of a flat spot just enough to make it a little easier to drill some holes. Then I'm going to take a 764th drill bit. You could probably use eighth inch too, it's fine. So when I grind a spot, I'm going to do three holes on each one, kind of pointed inwards just slightly, just to keep the flame off the walls. It'll kind of point them into each other just a little bit, not that much. So while the paint is drying on the can, I'm going to get these grinded out and holes drilled. That way the flame can come out. From this point on, what you'll do is you'll take your air mixer. Uh, when you get your air mixer, it'll usually come with like a little stainless sleeve. Uh, you don't, don't need it. So you'll just take the air mixer, which helps give it a clean flame. You won't have as much black smoke. And then you'll take your half inch NPT to three eighths male flare. And these will be on the outside with washers in between. So let's assemble this thing pretty straightforward. You'll take one of your washers, put it on there, and this will kind of help keep the whole thing straight, just adds a little stability. You will put the other washer, you'll put your whole assembly inside, and you will thread this in. And you have your H assembly in there, and then you just throw on your flare nut. All right, got our test run, it worked. Uh, now we're just gonna take our mesh that we got, whether you use expanded steel, this is a stainless steel mesh. I'm gonna cut its size for both of the side openings, and then I'm gonna kinda make a table for the bottom, and you can put things like lava rocks on there if you want, or you can leave it just as is. Uh, lava rocks will kinda help disperse the flame, make it kinda more even, give it that nice feel. So all we're gonna do is take some snips, and cut this thing to size. So I'll just literally lay it on top of here, see where it needs to go. So I have these small washers here that I'm gonna put on the inside just to help catch it. So we'll kind of start with one of these, push it through the hole, Hook the mesh on the other side, make sure it has coverage, and then put your washer on the back side here. That'll kind of help grab the mesh. And with the, if you could see, yeah, with the washer in there, it just grabs it a little bit more. So we'll do that to all the other ones and on both sides. If you're using the longer pop rivets like I am, before you do the bottom ones, I would take make your bottom tray. So all I did was just cut kind of a tabletop um, based off the width and then the height to get it above those pipes. So once you get it in, it'll look like that. And that way you can just throw lava rocks on there and they won't slip through. So we'll keep going. I did that before I put the other side on just so I can have the access holes. So I recommend actually doing that first, then go through and add the side pieces. So you could probably get away with the shorter rivets, um, or if you do nut and bolt, you can get in there. I use the long ones, they're a little too long, but it's fine, it works. Um, they grab the washer, I just didn't want ones that were too short. So that's kind of the box there. Take your lid for storage. Pops on really easily. Come down. And that's it. That's all it takes.